Book 43 of 2020 was The Anarchy, The Relentless Rise of the East India Company by William Dalrymple. So I listened to this book on audio or because I had a friend who was uh, reading it and I saw it on a good read update because it had been suggested to her by her brother and it sounded interesting. I didn't know about Indian history and the colonisation of India. I, I, you know, I've not read anything about it, so I was kind of just listening to it to educate myself really about it more. I, you know, I've read a lot of literature that kind of touches on the colonisation of Africa but there isn't very much about India from what I've had access to. So I thought this would be a kind of interesting book to listen to. Dalrymple is an expert in the history of India around this time. And he basically retells the events that happened from the perspective of Britain and also the perspective of India. He kind of, uses primary sources to kind of intertweet intertweave intertwine interweave that's what i was trying to say but i said the both at the same time um to interweave them to kind of present an accurate depiction of what happened in those times uh, in india it's interesting because the east india company was a commercial venture it was a venture that was based on capitalist notions and was independent of the British Crown and the government. So there's a lot of things that the East India Company did that the the government didn't know anything about, the Crown didn't know anything about. And so they kind of had free reign in India and were doing horrific things in India, which people might have perceived as being the government of Britain, but actually Britain, they, we didn't know anything about it. It was just a, a you know a commercial venture in a similar kind of way to how Amazon or Google or Facebook conduct business around the world and they're not really part of any kind of government and not representative of any government the East India Company are kind of like you know a corporation um, and so behave in a kind of similar way I watched a, a talk of Dalrymple discussing the anarchy basically and discussing uh, you know the relentless rise of the east india company and he was saying that he had access to a lot of documentation that was in india and obviously in britain as well and he's had people translate the stuff that's in indian uh, in the stuff that's indian um in whatever language it's written in um is it punjabi in india i'm not quite sure um I was going to say Bengali, mm, I don't know. Um, but anyway, that he's got it translated so that he can present this kind of accurate view of what happened. As he's kind of going through it and going through the kind of timeline of events, he's kind of discussing the critical steps that were made that created this company, made it very successful, kind of led to it becoming an imperial power. And behaving then in a way that was kind of colonising uh, the the provinces of India, and also kind of discusses the the downfall of the Mughal Empire. So it's because of the East India Company and the exploitation and the pillaging and and the plundering of of the land and its resources that led to and obviously the kind of uh, political uh, manipulation from the East India Company. You know, that there's a there's a an event that happened where there was a prince and he was quite uh, benevolent he was you know quite a nice um prince but he got duped by the east india company and, and almost had to give up all his land and riches to the east india, india company uh, otherwise they were going to kind of kill him so it was completely you know ma manipulated by this uh, by this corporation um and it was it was independent of the government and, and the crown as mentioned before because it's it's Capitalism, you know, self-interested profiteers such as Robert Cliver discussed how he just kind of, you know, went and massacred loads of people for money purposes. You know, there was no ethics to it at all. Um, it's a interesting present uh, presentation presentation of um, of capitalism and how how destructive capitalism is because it doesn't, you know, if you if you're only interested in power and money, you don't care about people and and the 
the devastation that you're that you're wroting on a people like there's discussions of how people were starving but they were being heavily taxed uh by this east india company um there is a lot as well in the book about battles and the different battles between because the east india company is a corporation but it had its own army and so the army would go and you know try and defeat the the mogul emperor at the time and and take over the land and take over all the kind of uh resources that that were there and because there's a lot of different names it's quite confusing when you're listening to it i think i would probably advise reading it so that you can see what the names actually look like but that just could be because i'm better orthographically looking at things to be able to remember uh information so maybe that would help but for me i was really confused about who the individuals were it wasn't easy to kind of keep track of who they were because the names were quite um unfamiliar to me because obviously they're indian names um you know it's not like bob and you know john and you know it's, it's a bit more difficult to keep track of um and for me as well war history is not something which really interests me that much um i've just finished reading war and peace and the bits of the book that i liked were not the war bits <laughs> the, the war bits were really boring to me um so you know reading about battles that have happened unless it's going into kind of like the the uh, strategy of the battle like there used to be a, a show on it's like bbc2 and it was about uh reenacting like battles on cgi and you used to have to like um this is really geeky i'm, I'm realizing you have to kind of like deploy different like cavalry and, and infantry and whatever and see if you could you could win the battle like in history it was or, or whether the, the other person would defeat you because there's like two people against each other um <laughs> there are youtube videos of this program i can't remember what it's called but it, it was real i used to love it i used to like think that it was amazing so i obviously like war stuff in that sense in the strategy perspective of it but just talking about battles and talking about like what happened it's like it's all the same like every war is kind of the same that there isn't much difference to it um and so for that reason it wasn't as exciting for me to listen to i think the book's very long for what it discusses but i think if you were really interested in this then you would probably really enjoy it. I know that my friend that I that I saw was reading it really liked it and obviously her brother really likes it. So I think it just depends on on what what your taste is. For me it's like I mentioned, it's just war's not my bag. Um but I was really grateful to read it because it it allowed me to understand that the colonization of India, you know, the other foundations for that were laid by a capitalist commercial company that had nothing to do with the government and the crown initially and it's only because of things that were done in that that led to that so it, i you know i didn't know this before so i thought that that was that was really good um so i'd recommend it as kind of a an informational book to fill in your knowledge of history but i i mean unless it's your bag i don't think that it's that enjoyable to to listen to or read